And Edmonton Alderman faces more allegations of assault tonight. Last week, Ken Kozak pled guilty to assaulting his ex-wife. Now, his former executive assistant and ex-girlfriend alleges he choked her in his city hall office and injured her hand during yet another assault. Kozak acknowledges he was in two altercations with Melinda Hollis last year, but says he did not assault her, only defended himself from her attack. Hollis says she came forward after Kozak admitted assaulting his wife, but still refused to step down from city council. Catholic bishops and lay people from across Canada are trying to figure out how to respond to calls for a national inquiry into Indian residential schools. The calls follow allegations that Indian children were subjected to physical and mental abuse at schools run by the Catholic Church. Kim Ternacity reports. This abandoned schoolyard in Delmas was once the site of St. Henry's Indian Residential School. It was burned by angry students 40 years ago. Oliver Longneck went to St. Henry. A yeah, priest came and got me that, that the first time and uh, I got whipped. His tales of abuse are not unlike those told by other students. That's why members of the Catholic Church are meeting in Saskatoon to figure out what to do, how to respond to the allegations of abuse. Nobody's trying to hide. Everybody's saying, yes, there's a reality there. We want to look at it. Groups like the Saskatchewan Federation of Indian Nations wants more than a dialogue. They want a national inquiry. Cultural abuse is, uh, we still see the effects today, you know, is when you take a whole society of people and, uh, you know, we, we, parents right, who, who've never grown up in a family environment, who've been forced to go to residential schools, now how can they themselves become good parents? So there is other issues besides just the, the question of the sexual abuse. Catholic Church officials will continue their private meeting until Friday. By then it hopes to come up with a response to something that damaged Indian children and the reputation of the Catholic Church. Kim Tronacity, CBC News, Saskatoon. In the days ahead on the Alberta News Hour, we'll be bringing you a feature report on residential schools here in Alberta, a clash of two cultures and the legacy of pain. That's in the next few days here on this program. Well, it's the end of an era for Canada's military in some ways. One of the last flights of the Chinook helicopters took place today. It's the huge twin propeller chopper that has served Canadian troops for nearly 20 years now. However, the Chinook is just too expensive to keep, so they're now beginning to sell them off. And today, Clayton Blood accompanied a group of paratroopers on their last ride on the Chinook helicopter. Paratroopers at CFB Edmonton were up bright and early, suiting up for their last ride on the famed Chinook helicopter. Have a good job! These soldiers jump regularly from all kinds of planes. They are responsible for testing and supplying all of Canada's military parachutes. Canada's military bought eight Chinooks in 1974. The chopper is mostly a transport aircraft. It moves troops, supplies, and equipment. But it is also a valuable search and rescue aircraft, helping out civilians in floods and forest fires. These paratroopers like the Chinook because it can fly at low speeds and at any height. Seasoned jumpers like Captain Jerry Vita, who just finished his 3,077th career jump, has fond memories of the Chinook. I jumped that aircraft when it first came into service, and now I'm jumping it going out. Oh, this is the Cadillac of jump planes. But the huge carrier is too expensive to keep. It costs about $10,000 in maintenance for every hour it flies. So the Chinooks are being sold off at the end of the month. Clayton Blood, CBC News, Edmonton. Big birds. All right, the Alberta News Hour continues when we return. Stay with us.